Hi, I'm Will Bishop, and today we're exploring API Essentials for Frontenders, the second part of our series on authorization and REST APIs for front-end developers. In this second part of the series, we'll focus on getting developers up to speed with all the details necessary to start incorporating APIs into projects of their own. We'll start with some quick tips and tricks for quickly calling a REST API, and progress to setting up our own server and making requests from a script of our own. Upon completing this module, you'll understand the value in adding REST APIs to your front-end apps, how to efficiently make requests, and learn some best practices. The final part of this series will build on the OAuth and REST API foundations that we've covered so far, and bring it all into focus end-to-end. -end. Before we dive in, let's quickly walk through today's five learning objectives. First, we'll cover REST API's place in front-end development and why they're valuable. Second, we'll quickly make a sample API request. Third, we'll walk through how to set up our own backend and server. Fourth, we'll cover some basics on leveraging HTTP packages in Node. And finally, we'll demo an example script. So what exactly is the value in leveraging REST APIs in front-end development? Let's explore this now. Well, REST APIs are one of the leading ways to extend the capabilities of your own apps and integrations by incorporating parts of third-party software into your own experience. If you watched the first part of this series, you'll be aware that OAuth 2.0 is the leading authorization method for accessing REST APIs, and thus REST APIs are the reward, so to speak. But why are REST APIs so popular? Well, REST APIs are very versatile. They can serve as a connection within complex software, or they can stand alone as their own product even. There are many successful companies who have taken an API-first approach, where their open APIs are the primary value driver behind their business model. Some successful examples of this can be seen in companies we've likely all heard of, such as eBay, Twilio, Stripe, to name a few. The head of developer ecosystem at eBay puts it really well when they state, we will allow developers to take all of these building blocks and combine them to create great experiences. It's great evidence that being an engineer with the ability to leverage REST APIs opens up so many doors for you. In fact, there's a whole world of APIs out there ready for you to take advantage of. All over the internet, you'll find directories and marketplaces dedicated to sharing and promoting API capabilities. For example, a well-known marketplace like Rapid API aggregates a collection of tons of public APIs with easy-to-use boilerplates and documentation all at your fingertips. With this in mind, it starts to become quite apparent just how much we can extend the power of our apps and integrations with some simple tools in our tool belt, like OAuth and REST APIs. With the foundation we're building here, we're one step closer to creating an amazing end-to-end -end application or integration with diverse capabilities. Now that we've set the scene and we have a better sense of the value in leveraging REST APIs in front-end development, let's dig into some of the essentials and get our hands dirty. But before we create our own standalone app, there's some easy steps we can start to take to test out APIs in a less formal environment. There are many tools out there to make working with and calling APIs a breeze. But without a doubt, one of the leaders in this category is Postman. We can use a tool like Postman to make requests to almost any API. In fact, you can even use it to build your own APIs, but we won't get into that today. In addition to Postman, many developer platforms or products that provide an open API will provide easy to use tools directly within their documentation. For example, if you go to the Miro developer platforms portal, you'll see a sandbox environment embedded into the API docs where you can make a request with ease. So what's the point in using these tools at the start? Well, there's a few reasons. First, it decreases the amount of time we need to spend to simply call an API and see the response. Without needing to write a script, we immediately get a sense of what a particular API is all about. Second, it allows us to inspect the particular fields in the response and understand the structure of JSON nesting and more. And third, it is the best way to validate that a particular API will help us accomplish our goal and that it has all the necessary information we need before we invest time in developing an app that relies on it. Okay, so now that we've talked a bit about why these tools are so valuable, let's walk through a quick example in Postman. So here on the left-hand side, we have Postman open, and then on the right-hand side, we have Miro open. We're gonna grab an access token from Miro by quickly authorizing. Once we have our access token, we'll use this to test in Postman. Back in Postman, we'll go to the Authorization tab, and we'll select a bearer token, and place the value of our OAuth access token here. Now, in the Miro API documentation, 
we're going to go ahead and copy a request URL that we can test with. Here, we're accessing the Get Boards API, and we've already placed our access token. When we send a request, we'll see a 200 response. Here, we can find all the details supported by this endpoint in Miro, including the boards that we have in our account. While this is just a quick example in Miro specifically, we also want to point out that many documentation portals have their own sandbox environment. Here we can test directly in the documentation with an access token and get the same information that we just saw in Postman. It's as easy as that. So far, we've talked about REST API's role in front-end development, we've explored how to get started with quickly calling an API, and now it's time to dive into a common prerequisite for creating a script or application of our own to call a REST API, setting up a server. Let's jump in. As we've already covered, Postman and related tools are great for some quick testing. But in order to incorporate APIs into our own applications, we oftentimes need to set up a basic backend and server. There are, of course, exceptions to this, such as serverless functions and frameworks like Next.js, but we'll stick to the basics for now. With this in mind, let's focus today's example on a simple Node.js and Express backend server combo. This is a lightweight, easy way to set up some infrastructure for us to make some API requests. All right, time to set up our server. As one of the de facto ways to set up a lean backend, we can write our code in Node.js and set up a simple express server. This can be done in just a few steps. Let's walk through them. From a high level, these are the four steps we'll nail down. Let's start with setting up a Node.js project. First, we'll need to initialize a new Node.js project, which starts by creating a directory to work in and then using the init command for the Node package manager. This will create a package.json file for us which will serve as a simple manifest of sorts for our Node.js script, which by default will take place in index.js. Next, we need to install Express. Within the directory we just created, we're gonna run the npm install express command, which will generate a node modules folder and a package lock JSON, two essential components for housing resources and versioning of our app. Now, we can create our main script, index.js, and import our express server. Within the same directory, we'll create an index.js file. Remember, this was referenced in our package JSON. At the top of this file, we'll import express using the require statement shown here. Lastly, we need to instantiate our express server and send a quick request. To do this, we'll start with this instantiation statement in our script. Then, we'll need to set up a simple get request in our script, and we can send a response such as hello world to this endpoint. Lastly, we need to specify a port for our server to listen on. We're using 3000 here. And now we can run our script and navigate to localhost 3000. On success, our terminal should reflect that our app is listening. And if we go to our browser at localhost 3000, we should see the hello world text that we included in our endpoint. Of course, this is a very simple demo of how to set up a server in Node.js using Express, so you'll likely need to add or tweak a few lines of your own, but these are the main steps necessary. But just setting up a server by itself isn't super useful, right? So instead of simply sending some hello world text to the browser within our app.get function, we could instead make a request to a REST API within this function and utilize the response in another part of our app, or send the response from that request to our browser similar to the hello world text. So far, we've spent a bit of time looking at ways to get to hello world with REST APIs, and demoed how to set up a server and get some details displaying in our browser. But let's talk about some functional approaches to making API requests within this type of environment. For this, we'll talk about a couple of common HTTP packages. To make it clearer, packages are simply pre-built libraries intended to make our lives as developers easier. In Node.js, We'll use all sorts of NPM packages, including some common HTTP packages like Node Fetch or Axios. Let's explore them a bit. First, there's Node Fetch, an NPM package that leverages the native fetch functionality in JavaScript, which is widely supported in most modern browsers. This package handles the HTTP interactions between our app and whichever REST API we're calling. In the context of the script that we walked through already, we could use a simple snippet like this to import this node fetch package and then call an API where it says constant response equals await fetch within one of the endpoints we set up with our server. 
such as the get endpoint where we sent the hello world text to the browser. Note that we're defining the API request body and headers along with the request URL. Node fetch isn't the only option though. Another popular package is Axios. This package is known for its ease of use and flexible feature set, including things like automatic transformation of strings to JSON, easy timeout settings, and more. Taking a closer look, you might notice that this example isn't so different from the node fetch example, but it's simply another way of making a request with another package. Depending on your case, an app, either of the HTTP packages we've mentioned here could easily work well for you. It's up to you to decide which one you prefer. Now that we've walked through most of the foundational aspects of calling a REST API and setting up our own script, let's take a closer look at an end-to-end -end example in Node.js. Here, we've cloned a Node.js script from the Miro Developer Platform's GitHub repository. It's a simple Node.js script that retrieves an access token and then calls a Miro endpoint. We're showing this because it handles a lot of the same things that we just talked about in regards to using Axios to handle our HTTP requests and relying on Express as a server. If you watched the previous module in this series, you'll know that retrieving an access token is the first step in order to be able to call a REST API. So let's walk through this script step by step. First, we require our sensitive variables. Then, we require Axios to handle our HTTP requests. Next, we'll instantiate our Express server and then we'll set up a simple endpoint in order to call our OAuth endpoint and then make a request to a REST API. So first, we're handling OAuth. And if you watched the previous module in this authorization and REST API series, you'll know that this is the first step to be able to call a REST API. That's all happening here within this try function. So once we retrieve our access token, we can then make a request to the mirror endpoint. Here, we're making a request to boards endpoint to retrieve boards in Miro. So if we have an access token, then we'll try and make this request using Axios. On success, we'll actually take the JSON response and send it straight to the browser, just like we did with that hello world text earlier on. If not, we'll throw an error. So let's give this a try. We'll start our script by running npm run start. If we go to our package JSON file, we'll see that this is what it expects. Once this is up and running, we can go to localhost 3000 in our browser. We're going to quickly authorize with OAuth. And we'll see that we have an access token that was granted. And we're sending the response straight to the browser, as you can see here. So that's pretty simple, right? We've sent the API response from the Miro API directly to our browser just for demo purposes today. If you'd like to have a look at this Node.js script in more detail, you can go to the Miro app repository on GitHub and check out the Miro REST API section where you'll find the Node OAuth repository. We've covered a lot at this point, from REST API's role in front-end development to an end-to-end -end example in Node.js. We built a solid foundation for understanding REST APIs and their value. Here's a quick look back at what we've covered. APIs is a way to expand the capabilities of your apps, quickly testing APIs, setting up a server, leveraging HTTP packages, and an end-to-end -end example script. And that's it! If you found this module on REST API Essentials helpful, the final part of this series will build on the foundation we've laid so far, taking a deep dive into a front-end app, bringing together everything we covered in the first two parts of this series. Interested in more content like this? Follow us on YouTube for more developer tutorials, and join our developer community on Discord. See you around!